Hello everyone, Yuki here, playing a game called Choices. This game, I would, I think, is like the butterfly effect. I'm not sure. I'm going to start with, and the sun went out. Ten man games. Cool. Australia. I am 13 year old. I yes, I'm over 13. Interactive fiction app updates once per week. Supported by in-app purchases and or video ads. The first part of the story is free. This is just the beginning and we plan on introducing more stories within the app. This means I'm not gonna do this. There's no death in your future, but the da 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 blah but that does not mean their de 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 decisions are without risk. Choices. Thanks for choosing the story. Here are some free tickets to get you started. Okay. Day 95, in the orange ball of gas that sustained life on this planet for billions of years, was still burning in the sky. The scientists were completely wrong, thankfully. Something vibrated on my wrist. I raised my hand and studied the watch-like device. It was Moticon or simply Modi, as I call him. Hello, teacher. The temperature this afternoon is a crisp 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I do hope you're wearing your warm jacket. Don't forget that you also need to pick up the travel documents from Miss... Monica, um, she's expecting you at her home. Stepping out of the train car, I adjusted my coat. Wooty was right. I should have to. I should have worn the one with the rolling. Too late to worry about that now. Dorilis Montag's house wasn't too far away from the train station. As my boots crunched through the snow. I felt Moti vibrating on my wrist. As ever, Moti's trifle face greeted me. You have just received a message from Professor Soul. He is insisting you see his latest breakthrough, breakthrough right away. Rendezvous with Dolores visit Professor Soul. This one. Dolores could wait. Even if Soul's matter wasn't urgent, he had become unhedged since the incident. We'll swing by the professor's place first. Moti sent a message to Dolores to let her know that I might be a little late. Okay. Would you like to review the message I composed? <clears throat> sure, Moti. Dolores, I'll be slightly delayed, unfortunately. Is this message adequate, teacher? Pitch perfect, Moti. I knew you could do it. Thank you, teacher. I've sent a message. I'm busy. Before I knew it, I was trudging through the bitter snow on the professor's front lawn. There was a dull, muffled noise coming from inside the house. I pushed the buzzer next to the front door and waited. Yes, a voice came through the intercom. It sounded, like, it sounded a little strange. More than the usual, anyway. It's me, Fresher. I'm in the basement. There was a relief in his voice. Click. My god. That was the sound of the door unlocking. Taking that as an invitation, I opened the door and let myself in. I noticed a large suitcase sitting by the front door. From its bulging sides, I had the impression that it was overpacked. Was Sol going somewhere? He hadn't said anything about a trip. Go to the basement. I opened the door to the basement, and I gingerly, I gingerly felt my way down the wooden stairs. 
it was as black it was as black as pits down there and I could barely see in front of my face. Suddenly I was hit in the face with a light switch cord as I fumbled to grip it. A voice rips in my ear. No, it must remain dark. Jumping from my shock of the hot breath in my ear, I let go of the cord. Professor, is that you? A dim glow appeared, highlighting a this heavily unshaven face. His reddened eyes bored into mine as he beckoned me over with a bony finger. You must see this. Come quickly. I hesitated, remembering what happened last time. Approached the professor. Slowly, I inched towards the professor, scattered papers with frenzied scrawling litter the desk and floor. An ocean of ideas spilling out of the brain and flooding the dark room. Something caught my eye. What am I picking? You saw it too? Soul's tone reached fever pitch as I grimy finger pinned the paper with a strange symbol. He began to ramble inexcessively about theories and equations. Scanning the desk, I noticed his battered diary with a lock. I wonder if its contents were more comprehensible than the professor. Examine the diary, leave the diary alone. Most people were fiercely protective of their diaries and given the professor's pensions for dangerous experiments, in some of which it was an unwitting test subject. I decided it was best I left the diary alone. Teacher, my logistics my logistic I can't processing unit might be damaged. I'm unable to understand Professor Soul. I swallowed a laugh, knowing I had to gain control of the conversation. Somehow Soul Soul, I interrupted. What what is it gonna do with the sun? What did you call me? I called you? Didn't I? I didn't call you. Are you sure? Something about the sun. Soul paused for a moment, then looked at me, excited. Yes, the sun. It all comes back to the sun. People have a right to... A glint caught my eye from the top of the stairs, and I insti- stepped back. Bang. Soul cried out, then slipped to the floor. Professor! I leaped to the side and flirted my hands over his chest, desperate to stop the bleeding, but not want to hurt my friend. Hands shaking, I glanced back at the top of the stairs and spotted a shadowy figure running off. A gurgling sound made me turn my head back to Soul. He looked like he was trying to tell me something. Focused on trying to stop the bleeding. This one. Don't speak, Professor. I'm going to apply some more pressure, okay? My voice shook as I spoke. I was never much good at anatomy in high school, but I knew the chances were that he'd survive. Nothing. He was still. Soul? Teacher, the professor has passed. Damn it, slightly cursing. I was about to pull my trembling, trembling hands away from his chest when I felt something under the professor's lap. Steadying my hand, I reached in and pulled it out of his pocket. It was a card sleeve containing a printed bus ticket and blazoned with the red and white co coyote logo of the long distance bunch company. Scanned and stored, travel destination, flying files. <sighs> How long have I been going? It doesn't tell me. Yes, it does. Nine minutes. A single thought broke my shock. The murder was getting away, not having any time to think. I pushed the ticket into my pocket, ran over to the soul's working desk, and pulled open the top drawer, knowing what I'd find inside. The professor's revolver. 
a, it was a small gun at eight inches in length, and it was made of sturdy stainless steel. I glanced over at Sol's lifeless body one last time. I'm sorry, Professor. I whispered. I snatched it up. I snatched up the revolver and leaped up the stair stairs. The murderer couldn't have gone very far. Now Ardalane put it through my veins. I could see the door swinging wide open from the attackers and stretch uh, blah, blah, blah. Slowly approached. Slowly. Raising the gun, I kept my form low and moved slowly towards the front door. Unstirring, I always had the option to duck behind something solid. Once I was next to the door, I pressed my back against the wall and carefully pushed the door open wider. <sighs> I leaned out. <clears throat> A little and scanned through the opening. No one was outside. Releasing my held breath, I quickly stepped through the door into the bitter cold of the street, hoping that I hadn't lost the trail. Teacher, there were fresh footprints leading to the left. And that's where I'm going to end it here. If you guys liked it, please say so in the comments so I can record another video. Please like and do subscribe. Both will be nice. Pasta la pasta.